One will give us this. Two will give us this. And three will do this. Hey there, I'm your host, Lissawi. And in today's tutorial, we will be working on creating area spells. So with that said, let's begin. For this tutorial, you are going to need some sound effects and an image. Now in the description down below, I'll leave a link to where you can create your own sound effects. And I'll also leave a link to the image being used in this tutorial. Once that is sorted, let's proceed and open up our content drawer. Now in here, I have a folder called spells. This is for our image and then for the sound effects that I'll be using. So inside this folder or anywhere you like, I'll make one here, right click, go to new folder and let's call it UI. Now in here, we want to right click again, create a user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, and we'll call it WB underscore cast area. And let's open up this widget. In here then, once it opens, we want to add a size box. Now this is up to you how big you want the area to be. Personally, I'll do 800, oops, 800 by 800. And then fill screen will do on desired. And this is the result we get. Now in here, we'll grab an image again, drag this into your size box. And if you click on brush, we can then select our image, which was called spell, I believe. Yeah, spell cast area. And boom, this is what we get. And that's what we want. So let's exit out of this, compile and save. With that done then, let's go back a folder and let's right click and create a actor component. So we'll go to blueprint class and select actor component, calling it BPC underscore spell casting. And let's open this up as well. In here then, we want to create a function to display our widget. So we'll go ahead and create a new function called create spell area or spell widget, whichever you like more. In here then, we'll do create widget, like so. We'll add our wb underscore cast area, promote it to a variable, calling it wb underscore cast area. And then we want to return it. So we'll do a return node, like so. And let's pass in our widget as well. So that's one function done. Let's compile and save that. And for our next function, we want to display the line trace that will generate that widget. Or rather, we want to create something that will shoot on the ground, let us know where that widget is supposed to exist. So we'll go ahead and create a new function. And let's call it our area trace. In here, then we want to get our player character like so. And we'll do cast to third person character like this. And from here, we'll do get follow camera. I believe get follow camera. And we want to do get world location like so. And let's also do get world rotation. And from here, we can do our get forward vector like so. And this is the distance, how far you want this to shoot. So we can multiply it by a generous value. So let's right click on the bottom pin, convert to float. And let's say something like a 3000, I think is what I had. So that's how far this is going to shoot. So we then want to add this to our origin, like so. And then let's do a line trace by channel. And we'll leave this as visibility. Let's plug that in there. Can also bring this down a little bit. So this here is the starting point. That's the location of our follow camera. And then the end will be the offset, which will be by 3000. Okay, so for the draw debug type, we can leave it as none. But if you want to test it, we can, of course, change it to something. And out hit, we want to break the result to a return note. And we're interested in getting the location. So we'll go location and put it in there. Okay, so with that, I believe we can compile and save this function. Next, let's head back to our event graph. 
And in here, we want to create a new custom event. And let's call this event begin spell. Right. So in here, then we'll um, create a new Boolean, which will tell us is the spell active or not. So is spell active. And whenever this is triggered, we'll set it to be true, like so. Then we want to do a set timer by event, like so. And immediately, let's promote it to a variable. And let's call it our spell timer. Next, we can go ahead and create another custom event. And we'll call it our update spell, like so. And in here, then, we'll get a branch. So B and left mouse to get a branch. We want to check, is the spell active? Because if it's active, well, then we'll continue. And if it's not, well, nothing's there. So we want to then grab our area trace on true. And we also have the return location. So let's promote it to a variable, calling it our spell location or cast location. Location. OK. From here, then, we want to go back to our begin spell. At the very end, we then want to get the owner, which is, again, referencing to our own player character. And we'll do add component by class. And we want to add our widget component. There we are. Like so. Now, for the relative transform, we can right click, split this, and leave it as it is. We then will do create spell area, so our function that we have, like this. And out this return value from the add widget component, we'll do a set widget. Now, the widget that's going to exist in here will be our create a spell area widget. So plug that in there. And at the very end, we can also grab this and promote it to a variable, calling it our widget component. Like so. So that's that. Then at the bottom here, what we can do is we can get a reference to that widget. So widget component. And we can update its location. So we'll do set world location and rotation right there for us. We don't have to worry about the rotation, but we have our new location there. So with that, then um, pretty much done. So compile and save. Next, we'll go ahead and create the end spell variant of this. So we'll right click again and do a custom event, calling it our end spell. And from here, then we want to grab our is spell active, set it this time to be false. We'll um, grab our spell timer. We'll do a pause timer by handle. So we pause that um, event here. Oh, yeah, by the way. We should also make this looping and give it 0.1. I find this value to be good. And if you don't like it, you could even go a little bit further doing 0.2. So see what works nicely for you. Then back in the end spell, once we have done that, we want to grab our widget component to a validated get because it could be not valid. We'll then do a set widget. So we're updating it again. So set widget. This time it's going to be empty. Nothing in there. And then we can go ahead and do destroy component if it's valid. So that's that. Next, we'll go ahead and create another custom event like so. And let's call it our spell. So in here, we'll be deciding which spell to use. So for this, we are going to need a index. So let's do one calling it spell index. This will be a integer. And we also need the spells themselves and the spell sound effects. So let's go ahead and create a spell sound effects, first of all, which will be a sound base type object reference. And we want this to be an array. OK, so from here, then we'll do a spawn emitter at location. Now we can create our spells. Um, array from here. So let's drag out and do promote variable and we'll call it spells. And break this open, delete it and convert it to a to an array. 
Okay, we then can grab this, get a copy of set index. So whichever key we press, one, two, three, for example. So we'll grab that. So key one would be index zero, key two would be index one, key three would be index two, and so on. So we then plug this in there. For our location, we can grab our spell location variable, get it, and plug it in there like so. Okay, then at the very end, we want to grab our spell sound effects and do also get a copy of the same spell index. And we then link a spell to a sound effect. And we'll do play sound at location. And again, the location is our spell location variable here. So that's that. Let's compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and create an input to activate our spell. So over here, I'll right click and do left mouse button like this. We'll grab a branch to check if our spell is active or not, because if it's not active, we don't want to do anything. So if it is, we'll firstly end our spell. So that's the event we were making, and then we'll cast that spell. So end spell, spell are right here. Okay, so with that, um, Let's create a function which will determine which spell to use. So we'll hit the plus and do get selected spell. Okay, so in here we want an input, and this input is going to be our spell index, like so. And we want to check if this is equal to our index we make here. So we'll do another variable. Let's call it select spell index and we want this to be a integer and type single so if this is equal to this we'll do a branch like so and we'll set this on both true and false so let's grab our selected spell index do a set as well here and the selected spell index will come from our spell index. So get spell index. Plug there and plug there. So then if it's false, we want to end the spell anyways. End the spell like so. Then we'll do a branch and we want to check is the spell active or not. So we'll do a not boolean just to come out of true. If it's not active, true. Um, Okay, this will go in there as well then. And we'll have on true, begin spell. And on false, we'll have end spell. So end spell right there. Okay, so let's compile and save that. And lastly, let's close this function down, go into our event graph, and create some inputs to select which spells we want to use. So we'll get keyboard one, like so. And then the beautiful thing is we can copy paste this a few times and then change the key to two. What? Not F2, but two and three. And another thing I should probably do, but let's do this first. We'll grab our spell index, do a set. So this is zero. We then copy that, set this to one. And we'll do set to two. And then all of these you want to plug in in here. So we'll get our spell index. This goes in there. This goes in there as well. And this goes here too. Also, let's go ahead and select our spells array here, which is a particle system type. And let's add few in. Otherwise, our one, two, and three key don't have any spells. So for this, I'm using the Infinity Blade effects pack. So that's free on Epic Games. Let's scroll down and select few. We'll do one like this. I believe the other one was looking green and we had a blue one. So I think something like that. Okay, so with this all done, then let's compile and save. We should also add this component to our player, otherwise, nothing will happen. So, content drawer, third person. Let's add this component here. So, BPC underscore spellcasting. Compile and save. And if we go and play our game, press one, nothing happens. Oh, we get something right. So this is a little bit wrong. 
So to make our cast area appear flat on the floor, we need to come back into the update spell and in here set Y to be 90. We can of course do the same in here, but that's not necessary. So with that done, let's compile and save. Once again, hit the play button. And now whenever we press one, we get something like this. So press one, this works. Press two, this works. And if we press two, then change to one, it'll update and change. So if we press one, then press three, updates and we get that so this is going to be it for the video i hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like and as always happy developing